order for Monday, yeah. November 21st, 2016. Uh, we have a quorum and the agenda is properly posted. Yes. Okay. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four is public appearances, public's opportunity to speak about any subject that is not a specific agenda item. No takers? No. Okay. Uh, number five, discuss and consider the minutes of the last regular village board meeting on 11-7. Um, any comments, questions? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve minutes as presented. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Um, Matt and Lee, I, I know the folks from Summit are here. Do you want to move up item 8 if everybody wants to do that and let them, so they don't have to sit through the other good stuff unless they want to listen to it? Is, is sure. uh, Peter coming? Uh, he's here. Oh. He's here. Okay. He's here. Okay. okay, I mean, we can, Continue on. yeah, once he shows up, we can maybe move him up just so you don't have to sit through. Okay. All right, item 6 is... Uh, Consider operator's license application for Larry J. Legal, if I pronounce that right. Chief, any problems with that? No, it's fine. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the operator's license for Larry Legal. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Uh, before we get to item seven, if you folks are ready so you don't have to sit through the meeting, we can move you up if that helps. Sure, that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Do we need a motion, Lee? Uh, sure, you can, we just make a motion to take this take this out of order, that's all. Uh, motion to take the uh, plan commissioning report, second. Uh, to now. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. second. Okay, motion and second to move up the plan commission report. Any other discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? A motion passes. You're up. I'll pull the screen down. I guess before you get started, I want to, on behalf of the village uh, board and the village in general, we certainly want to thank uh, some of the summit representatives as well as some in general for considering Cottage Grove for your new location uh, to bring uh, various offices together. So thank you on that on behalf of myself, and I'm sure we echoed the rest of the board. Thank you. Shall I proceed? Please. Okay. Yeah, well, thank, thanks for having us tonight. Um, I'm very excited about this project here. Um, so what we are um, applying for is a um, uh, general development plan uh, for um, a PUD. And uh, uh, sometime next year, we will proceed into a precise implementation plan for this PUD. Uh, so, OK. Um, This is the uh, this is the site. Um, I ninety four north is up, and in I ninety four the site is a very important uh, strategic node in um, in the Cottage Grove community. It's uh, right at the gateway to the community. So um, this site, uh, in many ways, this site has no front or back. And there's, there's four sides of this. So it's really important that whatever we do here has, um, has a facade you know, that, um, that, that works on all sides. Um, so um, the, the approach is to this thing, and that's the entire site here. Yeah? So there are developments to the south, and, uh, and so we need to be sensitive to that as well. So this is uh, the overall site plan superimposed on this site. Um, big picture, the uh, phase one 
of, of this. And we don't know when this will go, but uh, for now, this is what we are applying for. And there is a, it's a 120, 140,000 square foot building right here up to the north end of the site with parking wrapping around the west and the north of it, um, allowing for a south-facing entry point here with some um, uh, outdoor recreation spaces here as well that faces south, so that works well. Um, also, looking at the context, these are you know, one to two story buildings to the south. So what we've done is the, build, the, the building is a six story building, which steps down to two stories around the, uh, to the south. And that helps um, uh, relate it down to the scale of these lower buildings here. The taller part of the building is, works to the scale of the, the highway to the north. So, and uh, zooming in more on the site. So you can see here, the, the approach here, the existing turnaround is enhanced as the entry point to the, to the building in the site. Parking wraps around here. So here you can see in more detail here, this is two stories, that's a two story arm that comes up. That's the six story block here towards the highway. Um, shipping receiving is right here, well screened with uh, a wall and some landscaping. Uh, and access to the parking is right here, the under underbuilding parking, which is right here. There's about 90 cars underneath the building. Uh, the two aisles here, one aisle coming through like that. Uh, the rest of the parking is surface parking, about 400 parking spaces. You can see in more detail here the active recreation spaces and we plan to have some walking paths through the site as well. Um, future, future expansion, we'll have a, probably a building here and some parking associated with it. But for now, uh, the, the circulation plan is a loop that goes around and then goes back out here. We imagine that access for the, for the trucks would come through here and then the turn radius would allow it to do this and you would back in and you go back out this way. Um, so, potential land uses uh, for this site would be office, a credit union branch potentially with a drive up teller, uh, training areas, and one of the ideas we had for this was this lower um, end of the building here would have um, wellness areas on the first floor relating to the active recreation area here, and then um, training on the second floor. Uh, On-site daycare, potentially, underground parking, I've talked about it, surface parking, walking paths, outdoor active recreation. So those are the users that are planned for this uh, project. Um, so uh, let's talk a bit about the general conceptual landscape plan. For the landscaping in the parking lot, the, uh, what we're proposing is lower deciduous trees up to 18 feet tall so that we can actually see the building. Uh, evergreen screening of ground mechanical equipment, if there is some. So, um, okay. Uh, here's a summary of the zoning standards for the PO, Plan Office District, compared with the proposed development. And this, this basically summarizes what, why we are asking for a plan and development approval for this project. Um, land use. The land users are pretty much compatible with the PO district. Uh, floor area ratio exceeds the maximum 0.03 by, by a little. But that includes, to be fair, what we did was we, we include the uh, a future building here as well. Um, so that's a little bit over. Uh, the landscape surface area, we, we propose something similar, 25%. Uh, there's a slightly smaller setback up in the front of the building. Um, but the side and rear setbacks are plenty within uh, the minimums. Um, Paved area setbacks are fine. Uh, and uh, the, the height is one thing that we are asking for. The max, the, it's 90 feet to the, the roof of the um, occupiable spaces. But if you, if, you, if you think about the uh, penthouse, then it'd be another another 15, 18 feet. So taking it up to be about you know, 105, 800, 810 feet high. So 
uh, and in PO it's 45 feet, 4 floors, we're proposing 90 or 180, depending on how you figure it, and 6 floors, living floors that is, and a penthouse on the top. Uh, the, uh, so off-street parking spaces uh, exceed the, uh, the minimums, so those are good. Um, so a few perspective views, massing views of the project. Again, the building really hasn't been designed yet. So these are pretty much just conceptual massing drawings showing what, might be, what it might be like. And also, as a way of illustration, the, the kind of signage, that, signage strategies that might go on this project. So this view is uh, looking from the northeast, from, from the highway looking this way. So you have the tower here, the six-story tower. Um, and the, the lower element here with uh, potentially training and um, wellness. So you can see the 18-foot high trees that are modeled here. The first floor is shown as about 18 feet. Uh, signage, um, we'd like to have any view of the building would have Summit Credit Union and a logo on it and scaled carefully to the, to the scale of the building and scale the highway or you know, the context where it's in. So that's the view on, from the northeast. Moving on due north of it, as you come around, there is a summit and a logo on this stair tower here. The, uh, the entrance lobby extends right through the building, and there's potentially a sign right over the entrance here as well. Uh, and, uh, you can see the, the mass of the penthouse. We'd like to be able to put that uh, right over the, the, the location where the entrance is to kind of accentuate that. Uh, hierarchical element. Okay, now west view, this is from, if you imagine you're on N, looking east towards the building. And here's another idea for this, we thought we, you know, it would help animate the building to have the word Summit Credit Union up the side with a uh, you know, logo on this, on the other face. Here's a good view of how the building steps from the highway, it's six, six stories high, steps down towards, you know, on this side with the lower buildings here a roof terrace that faces south. This potentially could be a three-story element to accentuate the lobby right here. Um, the southwest view is you're coming up the drive towards the building. So this is the entry approach. Again, uh, here's another strategy that we might use. Potentially, instead of putting up here, we might put it up on, uh, against the glass. Uh, we've used this on some of the branches as well. Uh, and a logo again on this face of the um, uh, the stair tower. As you can see, our goal here is to sculpt the building as it meets the sky, uh, taking you know stepping back portions to to reveal um, uh, so roof terraces right here, and potentially roof terraces here as well, and of course we've got a major roof terrace on this side, and these are meant to be outdoor spaces that can be used for, you know, for meetings, for, um, for, um, for people to work, you know, step away from their desk, uh, for an extension of the cafeteria as well. So, um, let's see, whoops. Um, and uh, we have a, a sign over the entrance as well, potentially, right here. Okay. Um, southeast. Relatively similar view, um, and you have a, the sign right here. But again, you can see how the building is really designed to be viewed from all sides. That's really important. Um, just a few photographs to give you a sense of the themes and images and materials and architecture of this building. This is um, the uh, summit building um, at Rimrock and the Beltline, South Beltline. So, you, you have a branch here on the first floor and uh, a drive up and you've got offices up above. You can see the pallet of materials here is brick and the brick is, um, you know, it's the vertical elements on the building. The horizontal elements are a metal panel um, and which makes sense, right? It, it, it really reinforces the techno tectonic quality of the materials. The brick is masonry element, uh, massive, heavy, so it kind of is a vertical element that sits on the ground. Uh, metal is lighter, 
deformed the, the floors and the roof elements of the building. Um, one one uh, other material that we're considering for this project would be to have the base have this cast stone product again to give the to give the building a, a base, uh, you know, classically composing it that way. Um, so you have a base, and shaft, and chapel. Okay, uh, here's another another photograph, another building that kind of is part of another inspiration image. See how the building kind of sculpts itself as it meets the sky. Uh, uh, the building steps, you know, down. You've got one story elements, uh, and then the three story element above the materials, some brick, the base with the cast stone kind of thing. So yeah, just again, the building hasn't been designed yet, but these are some, some ideas about you know, the kind of level of design and design thinking that would go into this building. A um, few other elements. This, this is the branch for Summit at, um, uh, in West Alice on um, Greenfield Avenue and 894. And, um, We've used fabric banners with summit corporate colors to, to kind of animate these facilities and facades, add some interest uh, to, the, um, you know, to the exterior of the building. Um, so we potentially would have some of this on the building exterior. I think it would really help uh, create some, some, you know, some a little more whimsy, a little more um, animation to the exterior. Uh, we've also, this is the, Summit branch at um, Yellowstone Avenue um, on the west side of Madison, and uh, we've used in lieu of the just the patterns and stuff. We've used photographs of um, uh, just that inspire the members to to have a you know to to have a better life um, by managing their finances. Um, so. So there's another idea we have to just animate the facades. Um, signage. Uh, here's an example of some of the signage that we would use in the building. Wall signs. So professionally crafted, um, internally lit signs. We say Summit Credit Union. And then, so that's a wall sign. This is a birth roof sign. Uh, you saw some of these on the uh, massing photographs, uh, renderings. Again, internally lit so that um, um, it really takes care of, it's much better than a, a kind of a surface lit sign because it kind of glows in itself, much less glare. Um, so, and then here's another idea for signage. This is the University Square and next to UW Madison, uh, popping up elements above the roof with a logo on top of it. Um, yeah, I think, actually, yeah, that's actually my last slide. So, any questions, uh, comments? Thank you. Um, to leave the slide up if anybody want to look at anything to a bit. No, I think it looks good. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So, put it back to the discrepancies in um, the PO versus the proposed? Yeah, they're all <coughs> fine. The ARC and the Planning Commission both approved this unanimously. Um, really the biggest discrepancy I think is the height. But this is outside of the area that's regulated by our agreement with the airport, so that's not really an issue. And I think just given the location and you know, being such a prominent site and um, being close to the freeway, I think the, the extra height really benefits uh, the project, makes it more of a landmark. That's exactly what I wanted you to say. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Motion and second to approve the proposed general development plan submitted by Summit Credit Union for a 120 to 140,000 square foot corporate headquarters building. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion passes. Welcome to guided approval. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay. Going back up, we are at item seven, unfinished business. Discuss and consider our game con. This is super exciting. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to come up with like some uh, tin foil and a wire to <laughs> demonstrate the system, but it does appear to be up and running um, at this point. And Chief, I, uh, you said you'd had uh, that it's working, but there are some glitches. Yeah, there are some indoor locations that it doesn't work very well in or at all. Uh, one of them being the police station, but. <laughs> Well, this is not someplace important. Yeah. Well, it, it really isn't because it's just our handheld radios and we have base stations throughout the department that we hear the radio on and we can talk on. Okay. So that's no big deal. We tested it at the schools. It works inside the schools except for one spot in the middle lower portion of the middle school. It is kind of like a bomb shelter, don't it? Yes, that was problematic. And Piggly Wiggly, you can't get reception in there. So there's a few spots where you can't get reception indoors, but that's my understanding of digital radio versus analog. You're going to have some indoor radio problems. Uh, the Dane County Chiefs of Police, I have, um, I've heard nothing negative coming from the rest of them about the project. So it seems to be up and operating the way people expect it to. At this point, with the digital signal, is that correct? You either have a good signal or you have no signal. There's no fuzzy in between. No, there's nothing in between. Okay. And the radio starts beeping at you when you're out of range or indoors. Okay. So you know you're not getting reception. At least it helps you that way. Okay. So are you building procedures, at least in the meantime, for those dark areas? So you got to go into the Piggly Wiggly area and you need to communicate with you. Yeah, you, you have alternate solutions and training your staff on how to... Yeah, they just have to be aware of, they get that tone that they're not going to be in radio reception, so they have to notify <coughs> dispatch they're going into a location and they'll be out of radio range and then give them an alternative method to contact the officer. Okay. <coughs> so, Chief, um, what are we doing now? Are we <laughs> well, uh, we agreed or became part of the agreement with Dane County with certain revisions made. And I guess right now I would say let's wait and see what happens from here. First of all, you know, is the system, does the system stay up and running? And then um, what is their position going to be in terms of um, there are, I think, um, According to the news article that I read, um, eight municipalities had stopped payments to the county concerned that the system wasn't operational and they weren't getting updates from county officials. So um, uh, we'll see We'll see what uh, follow-up action, if any, they take. So do we need a new agreement? Because <coughs> essentially the agreement we have, DINCOM has not fulfilled because it wasn't ready on January 1st. Well, John, I, um, at the I feel that we, that there should have been a new agreement when they didn't make the original deadline. Okay. Yeah. And that was my argument was well, it says if by this date it's not in place, then um, and and that was just to get the municipalities to sign, mm -hmm. and so that just got ignored. And um, I, I would say that at this point. Um, I would not, uh, uh, I wouldn't even waste the time to try to push for a new agreement because I don't think that they'll, they'll pursue it. But I do think that, that, um, that there are a number of areas that we have to defend ourselves in terms of why um, those payments weren't made until um, the system becomes operational. So you want us to just sit tight? I, I think that's the best, uh, best path at this point, yes. I guess it makes sense to hear from fire and EMS too is how their systems are working. EMS sounds like from the meeting we mm -hmm. had last Thursday, it's working for them. 
and fire will hear in a few weeks. Okay. They were testing at the last at our last meeting, but we didn't have one in October. So if we keep so, it on the agenda then well, and just go ahead and what does define the sit tight? Because there's 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 all the outstanding payments, there's payments moving forward. And I thought last time we sort of talked about if it goes live, make payments moving forward, but not but we'll still withhold the outstanding payments because they didn't live up to that agreement. We could sit tight and not do it, not pay any either of those two. So option three is not do anything. You still have to disposition it at some point, and we just keep talking about the same thing over and over again. So, well, I think that that uh, if the system uh, remains up, and it, you know, you know, sometime in December, uh, you could always you could commence your payment, prorate it for the year, uh, and then start paying start paying forward and that, and not give up anything in terms of um, the back payments. Are they asking for monthly payments or yearly? I mean, I that was a yearly. Yeah, I think it's yearly, isn't it? Um, I, I want to say it's it's at least twice a year. Okay. Yeah, I, I know we get the amount in, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's in been, the county newsletter or whatever. Yeah, it's been about 14,000 yeah. over the last two and a half, three years. Um, but I don't know retroactively why those would be made. I mean, what what would we be paying for? Yeah, I know it's paying for the beta. Payment. But certainly, as it, if it's working, yeah, it's in the budget. Uh, it's working, and we're made, using it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're using it. It's moving forward. We made payments up till the original go live date, right? And then it didn't go live when we stopped payments. So there was there was. We yeah, need money to fund this, right? So we, we, we lived up to that obligation. They didn't live up to theirs. We stopped payments. Mm -hmm. We finally started working. We resumed payments. And that gap is on them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which then comes out of the Dane County taxes. We don't really still get it from me. We get it from the system. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes sense maybe to wait till December and see if we get a month's worth of relatively. I'm assuming that it's that with, with, with this system, um, no matter how positive you've been, I've been, or anyone has been, there have just been issues. And so hopefully when we meet in the first meeting in December, there, everything will be um, continuing to work. And um, Dan will be able to go into Piggly Wiggly, uh, not have to call for backup. Um, and then at that point, we can make the decision in terms of uh, paying forward. Okay. So move to table then. Okay. Yep. Second. Motion and second to table discussion and consideration of Dane Com agreement to our first December meeting, which I guess is Monday the fifth. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Item eight is reports from village boards, commissions, and committees. First up is utility. Utility went very well. Uh, we got the compliance maintenance annual report review. This is a statement from the DNR on our sewer system. Uh, once again, JJ got us the grade A. Uh, you can be A, B, C, D, or an F and you get an A uh, year on year. And we actually have a GPA, and it's a 4, 4.0. <laughs> Not too shabby. Um, so that's uh, that. I think you knew about it a little earlier in the year. It's actually dated from June, but we I get the final paperwork at right. the last meeting it was presented. Um, Gaston Road has been officially open. The email went out from JJ on the 17th. Um, I think there's some closeout work, so that we'll yeah. find out some more information at the next meeting as to yep. when the warranty starts, where you know any lessons learned and stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna connect with the town and make sure that they're yeah. satisfied. I drove up there yesterday. Look. Pretty decent, pretty well done. I mean, just a few rods in there. I'm just happy to have my shortcut to Target for <laughs> yeah. I, I had a conversation with with the town chairman. He was he was complimentary of age of JJ and the and the staff on one issue that occurred near near the stop sign of the of the pit, and something had slid and had to re redo it. And and he said it was just a matter of a phone call, and it got taken care of. And, and he was very complimentary of how fast it was taken care of. Great. Good sure. job. Um, 
So then we have uh, the next meeting, and the only thing to note normally, I don't really note this stuff, but the next meeting is scheduled is December 7th at 6 p.m. and that's going to be a joint meeting with Public Works and Properties. And we're going to do another open house uh, as a joint meeting for the sell down plot reconstruction. Yeah. MSA should have <clears throat> it's expected that they're going to be presenting really the final-ish details and, and really mapping that out for all the residents in an area. And then it'll be up on the village board for December 19th for final okay. approval. So for that goes through all the scopes. So okay. that'll give him the open house. And then we have a public hearing. I think it's going to be on the 19th of the correct terms, Matt. And then, and then, and then. Um, I don't. It? It's not a public hearing per se. I mean, it's it's not a it's not something that we have to do by any okay. kind of law. It's more of just to include the the neighborhood in the process as much as possible. Okay. And uh, oh, just sorry. Touch back on the Gaston Road. The pipe has been flushed. The road's been open. Is it on on? It's not on on. Is it feeding the neighborhood up there? It is feeding the neighborhood. Okay. So pipeline's online. Good. Awesome. Um, number two, I'm at, under item eight, Community Development Authority. Um, I'll let Aaron talk about the MADREP's annual Madison Economic Development Guide, which was the main focus of our CDA meeting. Yeah, you should have a staff report in your packet that describes it. Um, we did an ad last year in their uh, magazine, which looks something like this. I can Pass it down if you want to check it out. Uh, the clip shows where our ad from last year was. Um, we gave the CDA three options um, for the ad, kind of based on the ad we had last year. Um, option one, you can see in your packet, um, we took out the middle section from last year and uh, put in some testimonials from different businesses in the village. Option two, in that middle section, we focused on new projects new companies in, in the village. And option three was a, a combination of the two. Um, I know in option three, some of the text looks kind of small, but the actual ad will be about a third bigger than how it looks in the report. Uh, the CDA liked option three with a couple of tweaks. They wanted a different quote used in the middle section, and then they just wanted Cottage Grove highlighted a little bit more on the map. So that's the recommended option that you see in the report. Um, Price actually went down a little bit from last year. Um, last year we used money from the cable fund, and I think that was the plan again this year if you want to go through with it. Um, so we'd recommend approval of the recommended option. Okay. Any comments, questions for I mean, it, it's okay for us to use Summit's logo, even though they don't have a physical present yet. In the yeah, we can double check and make sure. They're coming, but. <laughs> Make it a condition of agreement. <laughs> I don't think they'd mind, certainly. I, I just just want to double check. Since yeah, that's a good, that's a good suggestion, yeah. All right. When is this running again? Sorry. Um, it'll, the, the new magazine will come out sometime early next year. Okay. And then they hand these out to site selectors and at conferences, so it goes to all the right. Make a motion to approve the advertisement for Mad Reps uh, Madison Area Economic Development Guide as presented by staff. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve the advertisement for Mad Reps Annual Madison Area Economic Development Guide. Any other questions, comments? Uh, I think just the add in there of confirmation with Summit. Yeah, I mean, if we can get more mm -hmm. name recognition to the, another logo, would be great. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Peer Court Steering Committee. Uh, we have, I'll let you pass these down here. I'm going to give that to Troy. This is kind of a summary of the January to November, 2016, you should have enough there, of the Peer Court cases. Um, statistics, obviously, I mean, the cases have like almost doubled, but that's probably due to the good way in which the police department is handling the peer court referrals and things are getting done. Just basically a summary of what the offenses are, age of offenders, 
um, outcomes. Uh, it seems to be a very effective system. So, um, if anybody has any other questions, I, I don't know. I, I normally I don't go to that. That was Harvey, but I went in Harvey's place because Harvey was excused. But this is kind of a year to date for Fear for it. Um, the traffic stuff, mm -hmm. those are okay to put on there. Like we had the conversation at the end of the beginning of the last, year, last year, some of the traffic issues, some speeding. Um, I think the main thing is we wanted to make sure there was points associated with the yeah peer court record because that's there's more things than just us. That's oh, absolutely. Yeah. Change, right? So that's then, okay. Um, <coughs> I think the points are just going to the motor vehicle department, or if there's any points. It's my understanding the points aren't allowed to be adjudicated out. They have to be reported to the state, but the fine can be negotiated and worked off. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. All right. And that is pretty much all I have for Pier Court. Uh, next item is Park Park <coughs> and Forestry. All right. Lots of good things going on over at Park. Uh, we had a presentation from an Eagle Scout who will be bringing his project to the board uh, at our next meeting. Sean will be getting you that, that information um, rela uh, related to Community Park is where they, the proposed project is going to be taking place. Um, <clears throat> Sean did some digging and found out the town has decided not to participate in our rec program, so we are just continuing as, as we had planned. Uh, we continue to work on our parks and open space plan with our our uh, fearless guide, Aaron. Our next um, meeting, we are going to be talking about our goals and um, a, a survey um, focusing on the who, what, and why um, that uh, we are serving for our, for our parks and open space. Um, <clears throat> we did approve the capital equipment plan changes. Um, that were requested of us, um, the um, the truck, as oh. we, did, we talked about, so the board or the uh, committee was fine with that. And <clears throat> just an FYI, the shelters are now closed, and parks will be meeting again in January. We're going to take this over. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> so we brings us to Deer Grove EMS Commission, I guess. <clears throat> uh, we met last Thursday. Uh, so. <sighs> boy, where do I begin? <laughs> call, <laughs> uh, call volume is uh, down uh, still from last year, although October was a record month. Uh, there was a total of 99 calls dispatched. Um, but So that difference has, has decreased. Um, at the meeting time, there had been 45 calls so far in November. So, whatever is going on, calls seem to be uh, increasing at this time of year. Uh, ambulance runs run fees through October were just shy of $432,000. Again, that's down from um, the same time period in, in 15. Um, again, that would be largely because of the uh, lower number of calls. Uh, although the 432,000 is um, over the budget of amount for the year. Okay. So uh, that's, the, 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 I guess that's a plus on that, on that account. Um, we have about seven volunteers right now? Yes. Um, and he's hoping to get a few more uh, in. Um, the, uh, we had a discussion about uh, the, uh, the fee uh, for uh, organizations that request uh, a pre an EMT presence at their events, uh, non-community non related. Um, for instance, the rugby club has uh, requested uh, presence at a, a number of their events. Um, Initially, we had only set a fee for the uh, an ambulance and a full crew, and we uh, 
we determined um, through the process that we needed to also set a fee for um, the car and two people, and then also just um, a medical tent. A, a medic, just one, you know, yeah. a, a tent, uh, to a first aid tent. Um, do you have those numbers, John? I have them someplace. Um, it, we, the fee for the full ambulance was 150 minimum, or 150 with a four hour, 150 dollars an hour with a four hour minimum, and then the the car was also 150 dollars an hour with a two hour minimum, and the tent was 75, 75, 75 dollars an hour, um, and that will be being published um, in the next few weeks. Um, Probably the biggest um, topic of discussion was the regionalization uh, discussion. Uh, that is an ongoing thing. Uh, with Cambridge being involved now, there, it, it's become a little bit larger. Uh, uh, we did, uh, at the last merger uh, meeting, um, which is where I was instead of Pier Court, um, we talked about um, gathering data so that if we do have to hire a consultant, which would appear likely with this larger, larger group now, um, that um, the more data that we can collect for a consultant to analyze, the less work the consultant has to do. So the consultant should be cheaper and take less time to do it. Um, one little wrinkle in here is that Marshall, um, and I don't know whether it's Marshall EMS or Marshall Village. It's village. I think, and it's the village. I'm pretty sure is anxious to get an answer, and they've kind of set a time <coughs> limit of March for for something to happen. Um, we are of the opinion that that's not enough time to do this right, to do the study right. So <clears throat> uh, we're looking at different options of providing some type of service to Marshall, um, either contracted or, or something um, something to tide us over till we can get this study completed in an in in appropriate fashion. Uh, anything else, John? Uh, the ambulances are due in sometime in March. Yeah. So everything's going, progressing nicely there for that. And uh, they were, the EMS sent in a grant. We'll see how much, whether that happens. That's uh, it's a altered. grant that, yeah, it's a grant that they've applied for before but haven't received. Um, it's an AFG grant. And that's not due out response-wise until next year, September. So it's well off in advance. How, how does our agreement <coughs> our three-unit agreement now, um, does it have language in there for contracting out services? Like, so to, to, for Marshall to pay? We, we already do that for Pleasant Springs. Yeah, 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 yeah. so. Okay, so, so. You would, you would, you'd have to make an motion and just adopt them into yeah. the agreement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Pleasant Springs agreement seems to be working out pretty well. I mean, they're happy. We're happy. So. Yeah. And actually, that was that was brought up. They have been very happy with the response from Dear Grove EMS to their to their needs. Harvey, have they made any progress in their in their discussion or in the discussion about the, um, the you know the, the size of the municipality or the the voting and I mean the um, whole issue with that. The committee has kind of been reconstituted, uh, and so the intergovernmental agreement where that has taken, that has kind of fallen to, back to the wayside. Not, I won't say fallen to the wayside, but it's taken a back seat for the last couple of meetings. Uh, but it will be one that is coming back up again in the December meeting coming up. And the structure that Marshall has with its entities is different than ours, so there's definitely going to be a discussion about it. Yeah. All right. 
Item 9, reports from village officers. Joe? No report. Kyle is excused. Alex? Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I have another report. We're there already. Yeah. Jennifer? Uh, big shout out to the football team. Um, they came up a little short, um, came in second. Um, but what a great season they had. Um, <clears throat> the girls' uh, first home game is tomorrow night. I believe they play uh, Fort Atkinson, and the boys have started practicing, so lots more good MG sports. Okay. Harvey? Uh, no report. Okay. John? No report. Okay, I have nothing at this point. <coughs> Lee? No, no report. Okay, Matt? Um, Horizon has been back in contact with staff to discuss the development across the street, um, but we won't be reviewing anything they submit to us until they pay the their past bills that they owe for uh, consulting services that they haven't that they've been billed and have haven't paid since the spring. So okay. we'll we'll see where that goes. But they do have someone else new that's leading the project. So All right. okay, Aaron. CGI is working on the second round of revisions for the videos for the website. They're hoping to have those done uh, pretty quickly after Thanksgiving. If they look good, we'll get them on the website. If they need a little more work, we'll send that back to them, but they should be getting close. Okay. Chief Labor, anything? I can't think of anything. Okay. Awesome. JJ, anything? Can you pull the over? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Like, we're good. Really quick. Can you All right. <coughs> JJ okay. wants to talk about Christmas decorations. Yep. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Item ten A. Discuss and consider approval of vouchers. Motion to approve the vouchers as presented. Okay. Second. Motion and second to approve vouchers as presented. Any other discussion? I have a question on one of them. Yep. Uh, this is Chief Zier. Page two. Axel Brian Brownson. Axel Brownson. So that's a lawyer, and I know we have. That's a lawyer. Uh, we have a guy. <laughs> Uh, it actually know. does our, our labor related ah, matters. Perfect. So, yep. I know what I know and I know what I don't know. So, I <laughs> actually involved with the labor. And you know to kick it over when it's time. Right. Yep, no problem. Okay. So, we have a motion and a second to approve the vouchers. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Motion. I better abstain. Carved one abstention. Harvey. Okay. 10B correspondence. Any? Aye. Besides mail, is there any correspondence? No. Okay. All right, future agenda items. I guess we'll keep Danecom on for our first December meeting. And Jennifer mentioned possibly the cross country team at one of the future meetings, depending on when they can be here. Okay? Um, maybe, if I may, uh, the EMS committee consolidation and the EMS normal report. Mm -hmm. They're two distinct different things, and they're both very important. And maybe putting them together, is it, can we break them out? It's a separate agenda. Yeah. Sure. So, and I think they fall on different times. It's, it's, it's a few guys, but oh, it's just, it's, yeah. it's sort of runs, I mean, I, it happens to me too with some of these other big projects and in, 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 in my committees and stuff, but um, I don't want to confuse the two. I don't know. Sure. It's other you guys. Okay. I throw it out there. Anything else, Matt? Uh, the budget public hearing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And then we have uh, those properties too. Let's put that back. That was supposed to be on this room. Okay, village property. The Vilas, oh, yeah, yeah. the pumping station, and the other two properties <coughs> next sure. to the municipal building. Discuss and consider. All right. Anything else? Okay. Um, let's see if I can get this in two or three breaths here. Uh, closed session, I'll make a motion that the Village of Cottage Grove Village Board will enter into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute 19.85, parent 1, parent E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public property, investing of public funds, conducting other specified business whenever competitive and or bargaining reasons require a closed session, negotiate for potential development in Commerce Park with Summit Credit Union and Landmark Corporation, and also Pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute 1985, parent 1, parent C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data, 
of any public employee over which a governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility administrator's evaluation process. Second. Okay, there's a second. We'll need a roll call vote. Troy? Aye. Alex? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Harvey? Aye. John? Aye. Hi. Okay, we are close. Just, I'd like to make a motion to approve assignment of the developer agreement from Landmark to Summit, contingent upon approval of the attorney and staff. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve the assignment of the uh, developer agreement from Landmark to Summit Credit Union, contingent upon attorney and staff. Any other comments, questions? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Attention. Motion passes. Okay. I move to adjourn. Second. second. All right. Motion and second to Wait, adjourn. Time is it? <laughs> it's 835 or 834. 834. Non-debate. All in favor say aye. 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 You're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>